Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today we're going to be looking at the IS in a little bit more detail and I'm looking at it today because I'm going to be getting rid of it as you can see there I've got enough XP now to unlock the IS-3 so I'll be moving up uh, with the Russian heavies I've already got unlocked the KV-4 uh, but I did make the mistake of not unlocking the guns on the KV-3 before it so it was a very horrible grind and ended up selling it because I got very very fed up and moved on to something else instead but I will be going back to that one at some point but anyway we're here to talk about the IS-3 eh, sorry not the IS-3 the IS I'm getting ahead of myself there uh, I do like this tank it was I was I'll be honest I was expecting something uh, a little bit different when I got up to it I was expecting more of your traditional role of heavy and soon found out that it's not and the best way to play this is pretty much the same way you've been playing the KV-1S and the KV-85 before it. More of a heavy medium. Uh, it is the most manoeuvrable of the tier 7 heavy tanks and we'll have a look at that in a sec. And you, you basically, if you come from the KV-85, which you probably will have unless you went through the medium line through the KV-13, uh, but if you have come through the KV-85 then yeah, pretty much more of the same. It's better armoured than the KV-85. As you can see there, you've got 120mm on the front, 90 on the sides, 60 on the rear. You've also got 90 on the, uh, on the sides and rear of your turret and 100 on the front. Now, let's have a look at some of the other stats. So you've got 34 kph top speed, which is about average, I think, for a lot of the tier 7 heavies, apart from maybe the KV-3 and obviously the Black Prince. Um, you've got a 700 horsepower engine, but what sets this apart from the other tier 7 heavies is its manoeuvrability. You've got a 35 degree chassis rotation and you've got a 28 degree turret rotation which is a lot better than the other ones. It does sit near the bottom with the view range though which is pretty typical of the Russians. In fact the only one worse than it is the KV-3 at 340 meters. Um, most of the others, I mean, looking at Tiger, Tiger P, T29, they've got a 380 meter view range. Black Prince is just behind them at 370. You've got the Chinese IS-2 at 350 along with this, and then, like I say, the KV-3 at 340. Now, the gun on it, again, pretty much the same as we used to from uh, other Russian tanks. It's the 122mm, 390 average damage, 175 penetration, goes up to 217 with your premium ammo, which isn't much of a jump, really. I mean, if you look at the Black Prince, which has got 171 penetration, and incidentally is the only one with lower penetration than this gun, uh, that gets a jump up to 239 with its premium ammo. And the Chinese IS-2, uh, again, same gun, more or less, uh, 175 pen, well that gets a whopping 250 with its premium ammo, so I'm not quite sure what that one is. Uh, with other tier 7 heavies, you're looking at the Tiger and Tiger P, they've got 203 pen with the standard ammo, 237 with the premium, and the T29 is 198 with its standard and 245 with its premium. You're looking at 4.88 rounds a minute with the top gun on the IS, which is better than the one on the KV-85, which I think was about 3.85. In fact, let's just go and have a check. Where is it gone too far? There we are. Uh, top one, 3.75. 3.4 aiming time, 0.46 accuracy, which I'm pretty sure is the same as the IS. Yes, it is. Uh, now, when you first get to the IS, you have to make do with an absolutely awful gun. It's the 85mm D5T, as you can see there. And if we look again at the KV-85, yeah, you had to use it on that one. Which, on the KV-85 at tier 6, was manageable, it was doable. You know, you could do the grind with it. On the IS at tier 7, it is goddamn awful. However, you will have unlocked the D5T 85BM on the KV-85. Uh, in fact, yeah, is it the KV-85? Again, I've been playing that many different tanks at the minute. No, it's not the KV-85. I do apologise. It was the KV-13 that I unlocked it on. So, if you have come through the medium tank line, you do have the slight advantage of being able to fit a better gun. The stock gun is awful, 120 pen, 160 damage, 12 rounds a minute, 2.9 aiming, 0.46 accuracy. 
I mean, with a gun like that, you really need it to be accurate so you can hit those weak spots. If you have come through the medium tank line, or you've gone through the medium tank line already, you will have unlocked uh, the other 85mm, which gives you a bit more penetration, 144 and 180 damage, but you do have a slightly less uh, rate of fire at 10.34, but you do have a better accuracy at 0.37, so it's not too bad. What holds you up on this with your first upgrade is it includes the turret, so you do have to grind out a bit of XP to get it, but then once you've got it, uh, you come down here, you get the better engine, which gives you 700 horsepower, and then onto the D25T, which gives you 4.88 rounds a minute, as opposed to, as you can see there, 4.08 rounds a minute. And it doesn't sound a lot, but it does add up. It really does make that little bit of difference. So, back to manoeuvrability. Let's check out some of the other ones. Uh, in fact, let's go to the garage first. I do have a T29 in my garage somewhere. There we go. So let's look at the maneuverability on that. So 35 kph, similar top speed. It is a heavier tank though, I believe, uh, and it does have an 800 horsepower engine. But the T29 isn't sluggish. Chassis rotation though, thir 25 degrees, sorry, and turret rotation, 26 degrees. Now, again, compare that to the IS. Let's bear in mind. 35 degrees and 28. So the turret rotation isn't a major, sort of, you know, major difference between the other tier 7 heavies. But those 2 degrees do make a difference. And the 10 degrees, which is most sort of, uh, it's the sort of average increase over the other tier 7 heavies on your chassis makes a hell of a difference especially if you don't just turn your turret you turn your chassis as well at the same time you can really get your gun to bear a lot quicker than the other tier 7 heavies I mean let's have a look I mean the Black Prince is well we all know the Black Prince is not a fast machine but let's go into a look at the top stats so yeah there you're looking at 20 degrees although it's turret traversing is better so that's something I did miss at 30 degrees so that is slightly better but the whole traverse is a lot worse and then we start looking at the German ones uh, we'll just look at the Tiger because I think they're about the same the Tiger and the Tiger P although actually having said that we'll look at both of them you're looking at 26 degrees so the IS is 9 degrees faster and you're looking at 23 on the turret so it's a whole 5 degrees faster there let's just check the Tiger P 22 degrees on the uh, hull of the Tiger P and 23 on the turret, so yeah, it is a lot more manoeuvrable than the other tier 7 heavies. Uh, the only one that it actually holds a candle to it for manoeuvrability is the Chinese IS-2. Well, that's hardly surprising, seeing as it is basically the same machine, just slightly altered, and you're looking at, yeah, 38 and 28 there. So that one is actually slightly more manoeuvrable. Well, like I say, is slightly upgraded over the standard IS. Now, as for using this machine, like I say, you've got 120 mm of armor on the front. However, you have got that flattened bit where your driver's hatch is. That is a bit of a weak spot. You know, the hit there, things are going to generally penetrate. And I found that the best way to play this tank is, like I say, the way that you've been playing the KV-1S and the KV-85 before it use it a little bit more like a, a heavy medium and use that gun to peekaboo so you pop out, plant one into them, get back into cover you can't, for instance, like in a, a T29 you can't get hauled down somewhere and be almost invulnerable if no artillery are in play um, you can't angle it quite the same as you could a Black Prince and just bounce shots all day long uh, I do, you know, the Black Prince is famous for its toughness and it's not got you know particularly good armor, but it's the angling uh, that serves well on the Black Prince. So with this one, like I say, you can't get in a hold down position. You have to sort of you know pick a boom, like I say. In the higher tier matches, uh, such as tier eight or nine, your roll is a little bit more limited, and you are going to find yourself trying to flank more and support. Most of the things up there will be able to kill you in maybe three, four shots you're going to have to work that a little bit harder but you can support your teammates very well 
and with the maneuverability you can get around the flank, pop out, put one into the flank of the enemy and get back into cover again while you reload. Now in a tier 7 match you do have to be a little bit wary of some of the other tier 7 heavies. You can't sit, you know, I mean you shouldn't really sit and trade shots with people anyway unless there's no other option. But again, you use your maneuverability and you outmaneuver them and you get around the sides or you use that maneuverability to pop in and out of cover and just plant shots into them. But you can have some good fun uh, in a tier 7 match in this, especially against the mediums, you can really bully them. So, enough talking about it in the garage. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of replays and see how we get on and then you can draw your own conclusions from that. So here we are, we're on Dragon's Ridge, standard battle and we are a top tier, it's a tier 7 matchup. And I've put this one on, uh, I did originally want to put my last couple of games on in it because I've now got rid of it. And I would have kept this, uh, the IS, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I've got the IS2 which is basically the same tank. Although it doesn't have that flattened bit for the driver's hatch, uh, the whole front of it is angled but it does have 20 less, uh, twenty millimeters less armour on the front. So, uh, I, I am going to go round here at first, you know, the usual way and sort of either try and get down to the village uh, along the ridge or duke it out on that corner if need be, but I changed my mind because nobody else is dropping down into this sort of valley down here where there's a, a few buildings. So I'll drop down this way, a couple of other people join me, and you'll see in this the peek -a boom sort of tactic that I was talking about in the garage. So we'll try and make our way through here. We don't want to go herpaderping straight out where the buildings are, though, in case the enemy have got there before us. Although if the MT-25 is going to do it, we'll take advantage of it and use him to spot. Doesn't seem to be anybody in here. There's a tiger around there. He's not managed to make it into the buildings just yet. So we'll see if we can get up onto this corner. Now it doesn't have particularly good gun depression, so you do have to go quite far over. Ooh, back up a bit into that dip. It puts one into my lower glacis and I bounce. Which isn't good. What have we got over there? 3000, uh, what's that? Yeah, 3601 H. Plant one into the side of him. I must attract him at the same time. That tiger's popping up to put one into this tank destroyer next to me. It was a nice tank, the 3601 H. I really enjoyed playing in that one. I think I might have to get one again. Right, get down a bit here. Put one into the side of that tiger's turret. Didn't bounce that time back off to reload and guns about reloaded start making my way forwards again put another one into the side of the turret of the tiger and back off again so he can't get a return hit into me when we're about reloaded move forwards he's maneuvering again something's just put one into the side of me there another one into the tiger and it's a KV-1S I do actually end up spending most of the fight down here dealing with these heavies that have come down. Right, somebody's finished the Tiger off. Time to move on to the KV-1S. I enjoyed that tank as well. Although I did play it less like a heavy and more like a medium. And I think that's the way to play the KV-1S. Oh, I've got a stir at Emil up there, see if we can plant one into him. I think it was him that bounced off me, but I'm not 100%. It's a funny old angle for it to hit me down here. See if we can no, that one didn't bounce. Then he hit my gas tank. Plant one into him and finish him off. Nice respectable amount of damage on this gun. 390. And those Stirrer Emils do not have very good armour. There's a flat Panzer up there, otherwise known as a Yank Panzer IV. Put one into him, take off half his health. In fact, over half his health when he's damaged my gun. So I'll use my repair kit to get that fixed. Let's see if we can put one more into and finish him off, and there we go. So, still not managed to move out of the valley, but I've had plenty of stuff to shoot at. Oh, and something's popped up behind me again, it's that KV-1S. And I just managed to move back in time, that was more luck than anything else that he decided to shoot at that moment. 
and it bounced off my uh, upper glacis. And I've no idea where that shot at the KV-1S went. Now he's trying to use his manoeuvrability to get back round behind me again. They are a quick tank, but they're not that quick. So let's see if we can chase him down. Sounds like he's run into trouble. He has. Put a nice one into the back and set him on fire. And then that T29 finishes him off. And that's it. It's 11-5. There's one tank destroyer left. And I very, very much doubt that I'm going to get to him. So that's pretty much me out of the fight for now. Yep, and there we go. He's finished off. So here are the results. 2,894 XP, 84,000 credits, although the two ops that I completed, one gave me 25% extra XP, the other 25% extra credits. But even so, that was still quite a decent result. High caliber, second class mastery, sniper as well in a Russian tank, which is always nice, but unusual. Uh, over 3,000 damage done, which is always nice, and top of the table. And the next replay we've got coming up is my second to last game. I did want to put my last game on here, but I forgot to record it like the idiot that I am. So we'll have to make do with the second to last game that I played. And here we are on Corellia. This time we're not top tier, it's a tier 8 matchup. So what I decide to do is not to head down into the valley there on the southeastern corner where all the heavy tanks normally go to duke it out I decide to play it a little bit more like a heavy medium and go flanking around the western side and around the north there so we'll start heading up that way and see what comes our way now like I said before in the garage review I do apologize for that bit being particularly quiet as well it's I'm using the same microphone same volume settings but for some reason when I actually record it live uh, like I have to do the garage uh, the garage bits it comes out very very quiet on the voice so I'm gonna have to have a look at the settings and maybe alter them for when I do that bit so I do apologize for it being a lot quieter than this bit and probably hurting your ears when it moves onto these I will try and adjust the volume settings when I'm doing it in future so that the uh, a more of a level volume Right, so we'll head right up into this new area. And like I say, this is, I think it is the most manoeuvrable of the tier 7 heavies. And I do like it for that. I do like my medium tanks, my fast mediums, and I do like my light tanks as well. But I do enjoy playing in heavies every now and again, and just, you know, I don't know, it's just a completely different style of gameplay. But it's just as fun, but for different reasons. And I've now got the IS-3. I've only played a couple of games in it, but I am really enjoying that tank. Alright, nobody else up here from the enemy team. So let's peek over this way and avoid that marshy ground over there. And like I say, this is a tier 8 match, so you do have to play it slightly differently. And you do have to play more of the support role. Not as much as you would in a tier 9 match, but mo a lot more so than you would in a tier 7 match. As you can see in a tier 7 match, you can play this quite aggressively. In a tier 8 match up, it's not so much. You can still play, you know, you can still afford to play slightly aggressively, but not as much as you would, like I say, in a tier 7. Right, I've not got sixth sense on this. In fact, I think at this point I've got brothers in arms and I've got full repairs. But you get that little detected thing when something is looking straight at you. And there it is, it's another Stur Emil. Put one into him, take half his health, and let's see if we can side scrape off this rock here. Start backing up when the reload's almost done, so I can start aiming. And he hits my tracks and knocks them out. But my repair's full, so it doesn't take me long to get him back up. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. For him to either ricochet off or just put it into my tracks. Now, that IS is not side scraping. He is making a very noob mistake, or newbie, I don't know, but is it tier 7 heavy? So he shouldn't be that much of a newbie yet uh, at the minute. Mind you, it might be his first tank line that's going up, but he is sat with his flank straight onto me. 
But as Jingle says, never interrupt the enemy when he's making a mistake. So we'll see if we can put one more into him and finish him off. And um, wouldn't you know it, it drops. And I miss. That's Russian accuracy for you. But somebody else finishes him off, so let's try and move down towards their base. They have got an artillery. Oh, something else has seen me now. Is it the artillery that's seen me? It possibly could be. Let's see if we can put one in it. Oh. What was that that just hit me then? Is that a... No, it's a lever. Right, let's see if we can put one into his lower glacis. Oh, just taken another hit from him. And that one went straight and true and straight into his lower glacis. That was a nice hit. And artillery finishes him off for us. Well, I must say, we are completely stomping this enemy team. The scores are 12-1 at the minute. So, if I can do a bit more damage, because I've not really done much, although I've got some assisted damage up there. But if I can just stay alive and do a bit more damage in this match, I'll be happy. And it doesn't seem to be much up here. I did enjoy that shot on the artillery, by the way. It's always nice to take out artillery. Now, oh, we're down to one medium left on the enemy team. I was just going to say there's nobody up here, and that's why. Oh, and there he is. A full health T44. Angle a little bit. Now, it says I can shoot through that rock, and I'm a little bit doubtful, but it does go wide and hit it, and some of the rocks, they're not quite got a full sort of damage model on them or whatever so you can shoot through the edges of some of these just like I think he did then to hit my turret it looked like from that view possibly the commander's hatch and I was trying to side scrape off the rock but obviously it wasn't to be and the T-44 finishes me off so that was about it and that's the T-44 finished off not a lot of damage done myself in that match, but that was the second to last match that I had in the IS. And like I say, I completely forgot to record the last match, which was quite annoying. But still, second class mastery. Uh, by this point, I'd also got my mark of excellence. I think I got that in the game before this. Track and destroy. I can't remember what that actually gave me. So I'm not too sure if it was a little bit extra XP. But 2,826 XP, I'm happy with that. And top of the leaderboard as well. Even if I didn't quite survive, it's still nice to come top. And especially in a game like that where the team was so efficient and aggressive. And uh, we had a win, sort of, well, it ended up, uh, I think it was 15-2. And I was one of the casualties, unfortunately. But there you go, quick look at the AIS. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did playing it. And hopefully I'll be bringing you one of the IS3 soon. So take care out there and I'll see you later. Today's new is 57 degrees. Today's new is 57 degrees.